from the vaults of Castle Dundreek. Over there, Scotch whiskies, all thoroughly maturing by the ancient old Scotch process of age, are being blended together in front of you by our resident old Scotch nose, Sir Rosses Hugh McRose of Glen Liver. And Scotch whisky. There is nobody knows more than our old Scotch nose. He is the spiritus I follow of the underage and the overproof. His lords exceed the royal and ancient vet. His rose red nose is half as old as... Ten gentlemen, please. Settle down now. There'll be plenty of time for that later. Now, you're all going to see for the first time in public the mysteries of Scotch laid bare. Thank you, Malvina. Now, Sir Moses, show us a little of your magic. Reveal to us the ancient alchemy of the Scotch blender's art. Cart back the Scotch mists and tell us all how you invented 100-year-old Dundrich Grayley. 100-year-old? Are some of Dundrich's greatest incidents go back over 200 years? Incidents, Sir Roses? Yes, you see every volume of Dundrich contains upwards of 45 historical incidents and other crucial moments in Highland history. All this in one book, a uh, 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 bottle. Well, such is the historical blender's art. You mean that Dunrich's a kind of drinker's digest of Scotland's past? In a glass. In a way, Dunrich's a 26-part television history of Scotland, edited down into a 26-ounce Dundrich combines its own unique mixture of malted moments condensed from Highland life. The glories of Scotland's past are here, distilled down into one harmonious national spirit. The blender's nose sniffs out those uh, tangy drops of history that will bring the blend alive for the modern reader. He knows how to battle here. Hmm. It's a 45. 45 euro? Uh, no, it's 45 proof, Preston Pants. 1745. Hi, hey, Johnny Cook. <laughs> 46. This? A bad year? Disastrous. Culloden. This one has royal approval. <sighs> what did you in this? Savor more. <clears throat> What Highland lore? And more. What gore? <laughs> it's bloody good. Gore and lore in equal balance. Macbeth. Why, Her Majesty's appointment. Try this. It's lesser than a Macbeth and greater. It's curiously white for a Scotch. And tastes like vodka. Still a Scottish hero. Polish vodka. Sniff a more. Royal Sobieski. Charles Edward Stuart Sobieski. Bonnie Prince Charlie. The Chief of Scots. A Polish prince? He is the rarest of Scottish heroines. Ah, what fair color. And mellow nose. And soft as the smoothest cognac. Your nose knows well. She was born in France. Ah, Mary. Mary, Queen of Scots. The all-round Scotch needs a moderating spirit. Oh, this one's old. Over 400 years. John Knox. The spirit of Scotch ecumenical. If only we could bottle that. Try this. You can hear the pibroch rising off the blend. It's the bottled music of the Hebrides. Dew of the Western Isles. A great Hebridean symphony. In here ebbs and flows. Oh, that we can all behold our individual Hebrides. 
tell us, of all the Dries blended historical incidents, which would you say was the key event in here? Oh, definitely. Macpherson's final ocean. Ocean like the sea? No, sea like ocean. Ocean, the ancient son of Fingal. Ossian was the greatest distillation ever to have come out of the islands. Where was he based? Not far from Lindrich, where one man's nighttime thoughts warmed an old pot still. You mean a whiskey distillery? Oh, mercy me, no. <laughs> this was in the days before poets were licensed to write scotch. On the finger, strike the string. Thou must awake the bird to sing. <laughs> the words of Ossian just swirled around the fertile mind of young Jamie over there. <gasps> Under that classic guise. <laughs> oh, 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 beats the heart or student or divinity. <laughs> But what better place for a summer job than the pump room of this border spa? On hot, rainy summer days, half of Edinburgh's intelligentsia could be found here, huddled in this watering place, lying into the nicht. Poisonous, <laughs> <laughs> oh, these fetid muffled waters! Oh, you'll have had enough of these poisonous fetid moppet waters, sir. Oh. Eh? oh, here's a bumper of ruddy claret to rinse your thrapple. Oh. Eh? <laughs> and oh. drop your lungs for poison. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> is the wind on Ossian Shield? Or is the voice of pastimes in my hall? Sing on! So What's this? Fragments of ancient poetry, he calls it. Who calls it? The Reverend James Macpherson. They're the poems he recently discovered in some northern glen. The works of a lost epic bard called Ossian. Done into the English from the Gaelic, but mostly copied out from ancient songs and Highland lays. Yes! <laughs> oh, oh. To the oh, these lines fly well with Homer and their well sprung sentiment. Aye, and better. This ancient Gaelic hero could scotch the Greek Odysseus in a trice and set the Embro College clubs abuzz with wonder and amaze. But who is this scholar who brings us this poetry from the land of leaping stags and soaring eagles? Uh, James McFasson, sir, from Invertrom, near Ruffin, near King Giusey. Ah, yes, 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 the McPherson's of Inverthrom, near rather than near Gnews. Now, I believe that my uh, father Mr. knew your Mr. Setting. McPherson, uh, tell us, how did you come about inventing uh, these... Discovering. <laughs> discovering these long-lost epics of the North. <laughs> well... Oh, we're still within the gurgling walls of the pump room, Jamie. Here you're free to tell the truth. <laughs> this man's a publisher, what could day as proud. Uh, how did it all begin? How did I uh, devise, I hear you ask, my plan so devious as to deal Scotland a once glorious and heroic past? Your man's a politician as well as a poet. As a boy of ten, I saw the captured Jacobites carted south after the carnage of Culloden. Our village was reduced to ashes, lacking George's troops. The recent past was in disgrace. By act of Parliament, all things Highland were banned. No songs, no pipes, no music, no Highland dress, no kilts, no tartan. So, 